Hallelujah. And so we are cheerful givers because God has been good to us. Amen. Do I have a witness this morning that God has been good to them? Is there anyone that God has been good to? <laughs> Amen. Or, or let me say, is there anyone God has been good at to? <laughs> or, or, or is there anyone God has been goodest in their life? If there are words like that, amen. Hey, come on now. You can make up your own word, amen. However you want to describe God. He is the most. He is beyond the most. He is the excellent God. He has been perfect. He has been excellent. He has been marvelous. Listen, he exceeds. He exceeds the good that we know. What is good? He exceeds that. So there is no word to even say, you know, to even com compare or describe the goodness of God. Because it's beyond description. Hallelujah. That's why I can't just say God is good. He's good as good as he's good, 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 good. So good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. Thank you all once again. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Charles, for leading us in the Word this morning, uh, the reading of the Word. And as he started the Word this morning, I was thinking, I said, God, I, I just want to bless you once more again because you always have a way of confirming your Word to me. Hallelujah. And when I started and I heard the Word, the joy of the Lord is my strength amen how many know the joy of the lord is the strength amen and you know we used to sing that song the joy of the lord is my strength 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 y'all know that song the joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 That the toss down to say, He keeps me living water and I thirst no more. He keeps me living water and I thirst no more. Oh, He keeps me living water and I thirst no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength, the joy of the Lord is my strength, the joy of the Lord is my strength, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. I remember growing up, we always sing that cheerfully. We'll be hopping around and holding hands and dancing. And, uh, you know, the body's not hold yet. And we can still dance. We can still jump around because the joy that we have, the joy of the Lord is indescribable, undescribable joy. Hallelujah. Yes. Unspeakable joy. Hallelujah. The Bible describes joy as an inner contentment and satisfaction that we have. It's not outward, but, you know, inner. Hallelujah. It's a joy within. Ooh, ha, that is not contingent on what happens on the outside. Hallelujah. It, it does not move by the economy. It does not move by who is in the White House. 
He does not move uh, by who is for you or who is against you. He does not move by how much you have in your account. He does not move on what your enemy is doing in their plot to kill, to destroy you. The joy that you have, the contentment and the inner satisfaction that God is sufficient for you. That God is who he says he is. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I, I, I just pray that we all get to that point that we, we, we stop being naive about, you know, polls, about what people are talking about, about who gets to the White House, about who our new boss is going to be, our new manager is going to be, that we stop all of that and know that God is in control, regardless of whatever. Hallelujah. In the course of the week, I was, we were talking uh, in our team and we were discussing and they were, they were giving us a feedback and, and prepping us and telling us, you know, hand of your contract is near, uh, blah, 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 and this and this. And people were sharing their experiences and some were sharing their nervousness, their anxiety, and say, so, oh, I'm updating my resume, I'm doing it. And in the hand, after, I just thought about, well, I, I said to them, I said, listen, I, I felt prompted to encourage every one of you. That regardless, I want you all to understand, God loves us and God is in control. Hallelujah. And listen, his thoughts for each and every one are for good and not for evil. This chapter may end, but it's not the end of God's chapter concerning each and every one of us. So let's be hopeful. Let's trust God. Let's know that God is faithful to bring us to an expected end. Don't panic. Don't wait. And at, by the end, everybody kept quiet. And everybody was like, oh my God. That's the word that I need. And listen, that's the word that the world needs today. That God is still God. Hallelujah. You know, driving to church this morning, we were listening to Pastor Jeffers and he was giving us a teaching about the end times and things to come and, and stuff. And he was talking about all of these things. And, and I was thinking to myself, I said, you know, in the midst of all the things to expect that is already happening, God is still God. Nothing that is happening is beyond him. Nothing that is happening is beyond him. In fact, let me tell you, it has to happen for the word of God to be fulfilled. Hallelujah, somebody. So when we see fulfillment of God's word, Pastor, we got to be rejoicing. Because it's a proof that his word is true. Hallelujah. <laughs> I know y'all don't want to hear that. I know y'all don't want to hear that. Because it's a proof that God's word is true. As the Bible has prophesied, as the Bible has revealed, so it is happening. Hallelujah. For those who love the Lord, listen, for those who love the Lord, they always look out for the fulfillment of God's words. Always. So they give attention to every event. They give attention to times and seasons. And they begin to search in the word. Where does the Lord, why has he said this? Where has he said that? They begin to search scriptures. And they begin to seek. They begin to seek for the truth of God. Help me with the scripture, Nehemiah chapter 8. Let's start with that, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. Because what we're talking about this morning is the joy of following Jesus. Amen. Not the joy, not, there's no joy in following the word. There's no joy in following, you know, a, a, a group, a, 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 what do you call them, music? Or, or, what do you call all those people on uh, social media? Influencer? <laughs> you know how they say, you know, follow. You know, you have to follow them. Follow me, follow me, follow me. There's no joy in all of those. You know, a lot of people we follow on social media, we follow them so that we can be informed, some, some of them because they make us happy. Hallelujah. But the truth of it is that it's all temporary. And guess what? They can disappoint. They can fail us. 
They can fail us. And when they fail us, what, what do we do? We unfollow. <laughs> we unfollow. And they also have, they also have the prerogative, the, 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 the opportunity to unfollow you. They also have that. If you say something against them, they can block you and drop you. But aren't you glad you have a God who does not unfollow us, but chases after us? Hallelujah. Even when we choose not to follow him, he yet chases after us because he loves us. Amen. Nehemiah 8.10, listen to the word of the prophet. As he said unto his people, then he said unto them, go your way, eat the fat and drink the sweet and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared for this day is what holy unto our Lord. They were to feast. They were to feast. He said, go and prepare a feast and make sure that what those who don't even have portions to prepare for themselves make available for them. He said, because this day is unto our Lord. I wish every Sunday that we can always do that and look out for those who do not have and prepare for them and take care of them and bless them because this is the day of our Lord. Amen. Neither ye be sorry. Neither be ye sorry. Don't be sorry. Don't be sorrowful. Because this day of our Lord is not a day of sorrow. It's the day of what? Joy. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. So this happy Sunday is not a day to frown faces. It's not a day to, to feel way down. It's not a day to feel so burdened. It's not a, fa a day to feel so tired because the joy of the Lord is your what? Is your strength. And when you have joy inside of you, you will be sitting down killed. You will be smiling at a person next to you. You will be busting them. You will be like, make room for me because this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Is there anyone who likes to do a crazy praise this morning? Hallelujah. Just give the Lord a crazy praise. Oh Lord, you are too cute for my liking. Hallelujah. Oh Lord Jesus. Maybe I need to bring a football star in here and everybody will see a football star. And like, ah! now let's get a sight there for Jesus. Because Jesus is the superstar of the world. He's the superstar of heaven. Hallelujah. Angels bow before him. Demons bow unto him. I love one thing I heard this morning. He talks about devil is the devil of God. Because God controls him. He does whatever God tells him. No matter what devil is doing. No matter what he's throwing at you. You know how sometimes your slave wants to be oppressing your own child? You know that? Those of you who have maids before, you know how maids will be oppressing the, 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 the child of their master because of one thing or the other? And when the master comes, they know they're in trouble. Let me tell you, that's the same way. Whatever the enemy is throwing at you, take it to your father. Tell your father about it. And he's going to deal with the devil himself. Not to mess with you, not to touch you, not to play around with you because you ain't playing. Listen, when, when the maid who beats you knows that you're going to tell dad and mom when they come back, he stop beating you. Am I wrong? Am I right? They stop, right? They all stop because they know you're going to tell on them. They know I'm going to tell on my daddy. I'm going to tell on my mommy when they come back. And they're scared. They're nervous because they don't want to lose their job. And they, don't, they know the punishment that will be for them. Yeah, I don't think God will punish the devil. He's already been punished. I love it when people say, God punish devil. God punish Satan. Hallelujah. For your sake, God will punish Satan. Yeah, I don't believe that. 
You know he's already judged. Hallelujah. There's a, there's a pronouncement for him upon his head already. He knows. Hallelujah. Who do you think God did that for? For himself? It's for us. It's for us. Hallelujah. Psalm 28 verse 7. Psalm 28 verse 7. You got it? The Lord is what? And my what? The Lord is what? And my what? The Lord is what? The Lord is what? The Lord is what? And my? Is your strength and your shield. When you are weak, it makes you strong. When we believe in our own strength, it lets us have our way so that we may understand and know that his strength is greater than your strength. <laughs> when we put our strength and depend on the security man, on those macho hefty men, you know, that one finger of God, in fact, not a finger, just <laughs> a blow of here will cause them to fall. You know, you know, God he has a way of showing us his greatness, his strength unto us. And listen, he's our shield. What is a shield? Shield is to protect us. He protects us. He shields us from the arrows that the enemy throws at us. From all of the darts of the arrow. From all of the aims of the arrows uh, of the enemy. Even though you don't see the enemy, but God sees the enemy. And when he shoots from any angle, God's hands are big enough to block the arrow of the enemy. In fact, let me tell you. He has built a shield all around you. And many of you don't even know that you are untouchable. But listen, the height of those who wants to attack you, they could see the shield around you. They know that if not for God that is on your side, if not for the God that is build a shield around you, they would have been able to get to you. God's shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Hallelujah. The Lord will help someone this morning. Therefore my heart greatly rejoiced and with my song will I do what? Praise him. Hallelujah. With my song will I praise you. In John chapter 15 verse 11, John 15 verse 11, listen to what Jesus said about his joy and what he wants to do with his joy. He said, these things have I spoken unto you, that my joy, my joy may remain in you. Hallelujah. That is joy. He has a joy that is different from your joy. His joy is what we sustain. Your joy. <laughs> Hallelujah. You need his joy. So that you don't run out of strength. So that you don't run out of joy. So that you don't sorrow. So that you don't be sad. So that the enemy may not win over you. Please let me put that scripture up again. My joy. May remain in you. And that your joy. Mine. Be full. So no matter how joyous a person may be, if they do not have his joy, their joy is not full. <laughs> That's why the Bible says the joy of the Lord is my word. That's what many people lack today. It's the joy of Jesus Christ. The joy of Jesus Christ. To be excited about Jesus Christ. To, to, to know that he fulfills. is the fullness of God inside of us. The fullness of God. He fulfills everything that we may be seeking for in life. That's why we sing that song. Take the whole world but give me Jesus. You can take everything from me. Take the money, take the wealth, take the house, take the car, but give me Jesus. Because if I have Jesus, all of these can be multiplied. Ooh, Jesus. 
You're not listening to me this morning. If I have Jesus, all I need is Jesus. For this journey that I'm, t- I'm going on, all I need is Jesus. To live successfully in this world, all you need is what? Jesus. I always tell people when they come to America, I say, let me tell you, this is a land of opportunity. But let me tell you, you can be lost in this land. You can be lost, you can be successful and not be fulfilled in this land. I said, I'm going to tell you through all, for all the challenges that lies ahead of you, you will need Jesus. Hold on to him. Don't leave him behind. Don't say because now God has answered my prayer. I'm now in America. I don't need Jesus anymore. You need him. Because the time and the seasons will come. That you will know you need him. And so never to forsake him. Never, never abandon him. Let's go to the scripture in Matthew chapter 13. Oh Lord Jesus. Matthew 13. And we're still talking about the joy of following Jesus. Because those, there's something about this scripture that really struck me. These two parables. You know, Jesus loved to teach about with parables. He loved to teach people with parables. Hallelujah. Hmm. If you look at chapter 13 from verse 10, the disciples also ask him, why do you speak to them in parables? Jesus explained why he teaches in parables. He taught in parable. Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to them it is not given. But to you it is what? It is given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given. Are you listening to the mystery of God now? Whosoever has to him shall be what? Given. But what happens to the one who doesn't have? Even more will be taken away from them. (laughs) Does that make sense? (laughs) The question I got for you this morning is, do you have? Do you have? You see, a lot of times we don't understand, we don't even value what we have. We don't value what we have. If we place the value on what we have, much more will be given to us. If we, you know how sometimes you give people certain things that because they don't know the value of it, they don't appreciate it. Sometimes they even just take it. They don't even say thank you. You have to call them back and what do you have to say? Say thank you. Because they know not the value that is in that thing. whatsoever. So to him... That has much will be given. Verse 13. Therefore speak I to them in parables. Because they seen, see not. Their eyes are open. They see, but they see not. And hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. Which said, by hearing, ye shall hear. And ye shall understand. And seeing, ye shall see. And shall not perceive. For... This people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should not <clears throat> should be converted, and, <clears throat> and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes. Somebody say, blessed are my eyes. For they see. And my ears. For they hear. Blessed are my eyes. For they see. And my ears. For they hear. Blessed are my eyes. For they see. And my ears. For they hear. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Because... It only takes God to open our eyes to see what he's doing. And to hear what he's saying. Do you see what God is doing around you? Do you hear what he's saying to you? 
this morning. The significance, the importance of being joyous in the Lord. Following the Lord with joy, with excitement, with full contentment, inner contentment and satisfaction. That I seek no help from any other source but from him. You see, one thing I found about, one thing I found out in one of these parables, and we're going to read it quickly, verse 44 to 46. These two parables tell us what the joy of God is like. It's like a hidden treasure. It's like a hidden treasure. Hallelujah. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. The which when a man had found, he hid it. And for joy, <laughs> I want you to pay attention to this. And for joy, thereof, go it. And sell it all that he had. And buy it to the field. <laughs> I'm laughing because. <laughs> the Lord said earlier. Some will see. They have eyes to see. But they not see. Some will hear. They have ears to hear. But they still won't hear. And it's so possible for you to, be, to walk around the same field that some, somebody else found a treasure, but you have walked and walked and walked and walked that path, that field, and didn't see what he saw. <laughs> I always tell people, I say, one of the things that keeps us, keeps us in this city is the fact that some people are making their wealth, their breakthroughs in this same city. That some people are calling a God forsaken city. Something ain't right. How is it that you all get your breakthrough that I won't get my own breakthrough? There's something you see that I'm not seeing. That I have to pray to God to open my eyes that I may see. The treasures that is in the land. Many of us who came from Africa can attest to this one. When they could, they, before coming to America, they always tell us, it's the land flowing with milk, honey and milk. In fact, you can pick dollars on the streets. We go to America, my pastor, I look for dollar, I didn't see it too. <laughs> I even thought people would be throwing money away like they do in Nigeria, but no. It's cast to find a dollar on the ground. You have to walk for it. You have to walk for it. This man found a treasure. He kept it. Ran. Sold everything else he had to possess this treasure. Pay attention to this. Have you come to value Christ to the point of forsaking all else? Or forsaking all others for him? See, he left. He went. He went to take care of everything for this one. For this one. Sounds like the same instruction Jesus gave that rich ruler. And the need to surrender it all to him. Listen, but one key thing that we all miss out is the joy in doing it. That's what he said. He said, for joy, dear of, whatever he did was because of the joy finding that which is valuable. When David prayed, he taught to me the joy of salvation. Ah, it's a key thing. 
Because many believers today have lost the joy of being saved. Many Christians today are no longer celebrating their Christianity, their salvation. We feel so shy to even tell and stand people before people that I am saved. I am a Christian. I have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. And say it with so much conviction and excitement that they will see in us the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. That we're talking about. Uh, Jesus is not sorrowful. He came to give us joy. And life that we may have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. Listen to the other one. It says. It says. Hmm. Again the kingdom of heaven. Verse 45. Again the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man. Seeking. Goodly pearls. Now listen. The first man happened to just find it. I don't know whether he was seeking it. But he found it. And some of us, we have come to her salvation just, just by, either by, we taught, anyway, we taught by accident, but God is always intentional. Hallelujah. But this man is a merchant man, so he trades in pearls. Hallelujah. And he was seeking for a goodly one, a very good one. And the Bible says, he that seeketh, we do what? We'll find. Who, when he had found one of great price, very expensive one, went and sold all that he had and bought it. I wrote here, what can you find that will cost you to give up everything to have it? That you will find something, a treasure, Sell your house, sell your cars, tell everything goodbye just to possess that one thing. Better be God. Because every other thing of this world will perish. But one thing that remains forever is God. So in my closing, I found out that the joy of God, the joy of following Jesus is a joy of discovering the goodness of God. As the joy of experiencing God's mercy and forgiveness. And it's the joy that gives me divine purpose. That I can follow Jesus and follow his will for me. And as I do that, I find the joy of a community. The joy of fellowshipping with his people. You, may, you know, sometimes people don't like fellowshipping together with church folks. But those who know the value of fellowshipping will always look forward towards coming together to fellowship. Am I always excited about Sunday? Believe you me, not because I'm going to preach. Because every time we come together, the Bible says that's high on sharpening iron. So we encourage one another. So we make each other better. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. The fellowship of Christ Jesus. So I encourage us to seek God with all of our hearts. To trust in him regardless of what we face. To embrace his purpose for us. Hallelujah. Because his thought for us are for good. And no matter what experience we are having. Though we, it may be dry. Though it may be uh, difficult. Understand the fact. That God has a plan. That is better than your plan. <laughs> Hallelujah. And let's serve one another. As we follow Jesus. Because there is joy in serving him. It's powerful. There's one prayer point that I have for us today. Lord, open my eyes to see you. You're working in my situation. 
as you're working in my circumstances to see you. Help me to see the worth, the value that is in what you have given to me. 